Pottery. I'm a third year PhD student at Aston University. My PhD is in um, the biomedical science area and it specifically looks at ageing. Before my PhD I did a bachelor's um, in biomedical science mm -hmm. at Roehampton University and then I went on to do a master's in neuroscience at King's College. I did a master's in neuroscience because um, I did my project, my final year project at uni um, in brain imaging. I think the first thing um, I expected from um, my PhD was um, I thought that they would think I need to know everything. So to know, um, so it's, that's knowledge wise. So I'm also practical um, skills as well. I thought I needed to come basically as a perfect person and then um, like there will be no time to train me or anything. But um, that's not the case um, in reality. They actually have so much time to train you. Your whole three years is basically a training ground. Like you're learning, every day you're learning something new. But then as you go uh, on, like during the um, course, you actually learn so much more. Um, and you become the expert um, in the topic. Secondly as well, um, what, I ex what I expected um, was that I'd have no social life. So I thought that it would be a seven day a week um, thing. It wouldn't even be nine to five. It would be any random hours. And that's not the case. I mean, some days it is like that. Some days you have to um, stay, um, put in extra. So come in on weekends, um, stay late, depending on what you're doing. But the majority, it's you're in control of your time. But I would um, say that you should actually take breaks. Um, it's very healthy to take breaks during your PhD um, to go on holiday. Um, I took a break, I took a two year break uh, in industry. So I worked first as a data entry um, um, associate at a company called HVivo. And um, so they do flu um, trials. Um, they were actually called the flu camp. And um, I was um, just entering uh, all the clinical data into different um, softwares and different systems. Um, I did that for a year, um, but then I um, wanted some career progression and also I wasn't really enjoying what I was doing. So um, I got a job at um, uh, another clinical company called um, St. Stephen's um, Clinical Research. And they were um, part of Chelsea and, and uh, Westminster Hospital. And they worked on um, AIDS um, and HIV trials. And I worked there for uh, just under a year before I decided to do my PhD. I was a clinical trial administrator at um, St. Stephen's. I think there was a lot of things on my mind because um, the friends and um, my colleagues as well, they were all progression. At that point, a lot of my friends were moving from the company and going to um, other jobs and just moving up the ladder. And I did think that, well, if I leave the ladder now and go back into education, that's three years of my life. Um, number one, I thought it was going to take so many years and um, by the time I come back, everyone would be up there. And it was, I was also thinking about how much I would earn when I come um, out. Um, it was a very, very big decision, which I didn't take lightly as well. It came down to what I was more passionate about. Um, and I didn't want to be in a job where I would not enjoy it. And so um, actually going into, um, going from um, a career back into education was a bit difficult because um, it was a big step because you become a student again. And um, so that includes the money, money wise and, you know, um, just it was a big sacrifice. But I think um, taking that sacrifice is something that I really needed. And it's, I feel like if it's not something that you're really sure of, then um, don't do because it's a very major sacrifice. So my PhD is um, studying aging. So I'm looking at a particular um, receptor called the metabotropic glutamate receptors and their role in aging. So um, I study, I use um, fruit flies or Drosophila as a, a model to study this. And um, this, um, this, uh, well, there's a mutation, so these flies don't have um, any of these receptors and it causes them to live longer. But it only causes female flies to live longer. So I'm trying to study and uh, find out why these female flies live longer and um, to find the mechanisms behind this because we have these receptors. So if we can um, you know, find out the reasons why we could use a drug or, um, to basically promote prolonged longevity in humans. 
but then the problem is we're not only trying to prolong um, longevity we're also trying to um, see um, how our health like improve health during old age because that's a major problem um, with aging there's more to life than just medicine and lab work but there's other things that you can use your degree to do